In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can make your own graffiti decals from pictures of trains that you have taken. Uh, this video is a little bit long because we're actually going to do two different examples. This boxcar is the first example. And this hopper car is the second example. I'm doing two examples because I really want to have just one video that really gives you all of the information you need to really get started and try and do this on your own if you're so inclined to do that. If you don't want to put graffiti on your trains, this is still useful if you would like to create your own custom patch jobs from photos of trains that you have taken. Before I started building my layout, I was doing train photography. And in anticipation of building a layout, I was taking pictures of interesting graffiti on freight cars. The plan was to try and duplicate some of the graffiti. At first I tried hand painting, that didn't really work, and I think I finally got decals figured out, so I decided to make a video about it. This is probably not going to be the most exciting video ever, but hopefully it will be helpful if this is something you want to do. So let's talk about what you're going to need to get started. First, you're going to need a camera because you're going to go out and take pictures of trains. And I'm going to tell you how to do that here in a second. And you're going to need some photo editing software. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use paint.net, which is a very nice free uh, photo editing application for Windows. But if you have access to something like Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever and know how to use it, then that's going to be even better. You're going to need some decal film, and I'll talk about that in a second. And it's available in both white and clear, and you're probably going to want to buy some of each. You're going to need a color printer. I'm using a laser printer, but other people have had success with inkjet printers. And then you're going to want your favorite decal solutions. This is the brand of decal paper that I'm using, and I get it from Amazon. Uh, it's about a dollar a sheet, I think and you can get it in clear and white so i usually get some of each uh, because each decal uh, you kind of have to look at it and assess whether you want to do it in clear or white but that's the brand i'm using i learned a lot from the diecast resurrection channel so i'm going to put some links to his videos in the description he uses an inkjet printer so if you only have access to an inkjet you're going to want to watch his videos to see how he does his Back when I was taking pictures of freight cars, I got this freight car, the uh, upper picture, in 2014 at Cassandra, Pennsylvania. And this was something that I always wanted to try and replicate on a freight car for my model railroad. I always figured that hand painting it really was not going to be an option. And when I recently discovered that I think Athern came out with uh, a real similar box car, I decided to go back and revisit this and give it a try with a decal. In this particular case, the decal is clear and I painted white on the freight car underneath where the decal is going to go. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think that's a pretty successful replication of the original freight car. When I first started trying to put graffiti on freight cars, I was trying to hand paint them. And this is one of the early examples and you can see that really it's not very good. This is that same freight car. I managed to remove the hand painted graffiti using some isopropyl alcohol. And here I have created some decals from the original freight car and applied them to the model and it looks much better. In this case, these decals are printed on white paper and then I touched up around the border with some red paint, which is slightly visible. Here's another one of the original hand painted freight cars. Hoppers are easier because the sides are smooth, but still this looks pretty bad. Even though the original image was skewed a little bit, I was still able to get a pretty decent decal and this one looks much better than the original hand painted version. This decal was printed on clear paper and I did paint a little tiny bit of white at the bottom of the ADM logo, but the white paint is not completely covering the logo, so there's still some logo visible underneath the decal. There's just something about these old rail box cars that have a really interesting patina. This was a really interesting bit of graffiti. I tried to do a hand painted job and really it just doesn't look that great. Here is the decal version. It looks much better. In this particular case, the main part of the graffiti is on a white decal, but the scribbles off to the uh, uh, left of the H, uh, those were on clear decals. 
Here's a nice bit of juvenile artwork and you can see that my hand painted version just really is not all that impressive. Here I redid it as a decal. In this case the decals are clear and I painted white underneath where the decal is going to go. Doesn't look perfect but it's much better than the original hand painted version. The biggest problem here is that I didn't paint enough white underneath the B at the top of the letter and so you can still see the box car through the black outline. Here's another nice looking old rail box car. This particular piece of vandalism I only did as a decal. This would be pretty hard to hand paint. This is a clear decal and I painted white underneath where I put the decal. And in this case I broke the decal up into three parts. The left side, the right side, and the door rather than apply the decal all as one giant strip. That made it much easier. The first thing you want to do is get some images of some freight cars with graffiti on them. And uh, for years before I built my model railroad, I was taking pictures of freight cars with graffiti, so I have a pretty good collection. So here I have some of them. There are certain things that you want to do though. You want to really make sure it's a cloudy day. You don't want any bright sunlight. And you want to find a place where the trains are going past pretty slow so you can get a really good picture of them. Uh, no obstructions. And you don't want to be too close because you don't want any distortion in the image. You want to really be able to get a straight on image. One thing that you'll want to avoid is skewed images. Obviously this one won't make a good decal because we're just really looking at too much of an angle on the freight car. Here's another one. It's not exactly straight on to the freight car. We're kind of go looking down at it and it's kind of off at an angle. Uh, so this one's probably not usable. This is a really cool uh, image. Uh, it is vandalism of course, but still an interesting image. Uh, two problems. One is that it's skewed and then we also have a problem with the shadows uh, on the image. This one is a little bit skewed and also in sunlight, but as you saw in the introduction, I was able to make a pretty decent decal out of it. For slightly skewed images like this, it's often much less noticeable once you cut out the graffiti and don't have the rest of the freight car as a reference. You also want to avoid shooting in bright sunlight because you're going to get shadows on the graffiti. So you really want a cloudy day. Uh, on this box car, the ribs on the box car are making pretty distinct shadows on the graffiti, so this one is probably not very usable. In this image, the sun is making glare, so that one is probably not usable. This one is a sunny day, but this is probably salvageable because it's not a lot of direct sunlight and there's not a lot of, of uh, shadow from the ribs on the box car. So I might try to do something with that. You also want to avoid obstructions. Uh, this one is behind some brush, so you can't really make a decal out of this. Uh, also a little bit skewed and uh, I didn't get the entire freight car in the image. We're going to do our photo editing in paint.net, which is a completely free photo editing tool and is pretty full featured and sufficient for what we're going to do. Unfortunately, my screen capture software was not able to capture the entire user interface. There are three little tool windows that do not show up in the video. There's a little toolbox, there's a layers window, and there's a color picker. The only one that really matters is the layers window uh, because we're going to use two different layers uh, throughout the video and I'm going to be switching back and forth between them and you're kind of not going to see that happen, but I'm going to try and describe what's going on in the video. Just uh, that's an unfortunate side effect of the screen capture software and the way paint.net set up its windows. First thing I want to do is uh, crop out the piece of graffiti. So I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to go to the rectangle select and I'm going to select the graffiti. I'm going to go to image and go to crop to selection. And I'm going to do a little bit more of a crop here. Now 
The next thing I want to do is brighten up the image and make it a little more vibrant because when you print it out on decal paper, it loses some of its vibrance. So I'm going to go to Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, and I'm going to brighten up the image and increase the contrast a bit. And you can also go to Hue and Saturation and increase the saturation somewhat. So that looks pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is get rid of all of the boxcar around the uh, graffiti. So I'm going to go to Tools. And I'm going to go to Magic Wand. And you'll see that there's a tolerance up here. So the Magic Wand is going to select and it's going to select uh, everything within that color within the level of tolerance. So as I lower the level of tolerance, the selection changes. So this looks pretty good. And this one's pretty good because the blue outline of the uh, graffiti has pretty good contrast with the red color of the boxcar. So this should be pretty easy. So I hold down the control key and select and it keeps adding to the selection. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to go to edit, copy, and edit and paste into a new layer and I want to keep the same selection so you can't see the layer window because my photo capture software isn't showing this layer window but I have two layers that's the top layer and then the background layer is just the same image so you can see this is what the top layer is and everything is still selected in the top layer so now I want to go to tools and go to paintbrush and I want to select a pretty big brush just because it's easier and my color is white and I'm going to now white out everywhere and because they have a selection it's only going to white out where the selection is so I have that so now I'm done with the selection so I can go to edit and deselect and you can't see it but I'm going to bring back the original layer. So that's what my image looks like now in two layers. And then still working in the first layer and I still have the white paintbrush. I want to just get rid of this extra stuff that I missed with the selector tool. And if you make a mistake you can do a control Z and that will undo the uh, what you've done. You can change the brush size up here if you want to, if you need to get a smaller brush and hit the details. But this one's pretty easy. Okay, so now this is what I have. So this is the image, and that's layer two, and that's layer one, background image. So still working in layer two, you'll see that we have these sharp, jagged edges around uh, the image. I want to go to effects, and go to blurs, and go to Gaussian blur. And you'll see it's, it's blurring the image. It's only working on layer two. So I can increase or decrease the blur. I kind of like to go to about seven, five to seven, and that softens the blur a little bit. Click OK. And I think this one is pretty good. Uh, probably going to brighten it up a little bit, though. So the, first, the next thing I want to do is go to Layers, Merge Layer Down. So you can't see it, but now I only have one layer and I want to save my image. And I want to do a little more uh, adjustment to the color. So I'm going to come back here and I think I'm going to brighten it up a little bit. And add a little more saturation to it. And that's it. 
Here I have opened the image in Microsoft Word. I stuck the uh, image into a Word document. And I can use my ruler up here to size the image to get it to about the right size. And you want to measure on your freight car. And what I like to do is make multiple copies. And I'm going to size each one a little bit differently. Because I don't know what size I'm going to want exactly. And then uh, I'm going to print that out and then I'll pick uh, the size that is the best. So I'm just going to print it on plain paper, figure out what size I want, and then make a couple copies of the correct size and print it on the decal paper. This is the freight car that I'm using and it's already weathered, but that's the subject of another video. Uh, it did have a decal on here and I removed it using uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, one notable difference is that the door on the original is flat and on the model it's uh, got these ribs and I'm not sure if the, uh, the number of um, ribs is the same on the side. But anyway, if you look at the original, the decal runs from about here over to the rib with the ladder. So that's about here to, I don't know, here. So this is my printed out sheet. I want to find one that's about the right size. And this is just regular paper, not decal paper. That looks like a good candidate. Or maybe this one. So the decal is going to wrap over the ribs. So you might want to take that into consideration when you're sizing it up. Uh, or you maybe you just don't care. And maybe you don't really care that much to really make it match up exactly. Uh, one thing that's notable on here, it's kind of nice uh, for this particular, particular piece of graffiti, is that the graffiti stops above this rib, or the sliding uh, support, the door support. And the reason that that's good is because it's very difficult to wrap a, a decal over this particular support. Going over the ribs isn't such a bad thing to do. Uh, it's not really that difficult, but going over the support and the ribs really causes problems with the decals in this little section. So it's kind of convenient that that works out that way. So it's going to be right here is where that uh, sliding piece is going to be. So I think I'm going to go with the middle one. Maybe that's too long. Maybe I want to go with this one. I think I want to go with this one. I think that looks like it's going to be about right. This one's a pretty good candidate for both white or clear. You could go either way. Uh, if you went with white, you have, you're going to have a white edge around the decal. It does look like it's a pretty easy one to trim just to the color. And then uh, touch up the edge with either red paint to match the boxcar or blue paint to match the decal. But you can also go with a clear decal and paint white underneath where the decal is going to go. And I think I'm going to try that. I think what I want to do here is cut around the graffiti and see what it's going to look like just on its own. So once I know my size, I'm going to go back to my Word document and I am going to copy and paste that particular size uh, multiple times so that when I print it out onto the decal sheet, I have uh, at least uh, three or four uh, decals of the correct size to work with in case I make a mistake. So the challenge here is if I go with a clear decal, I have to paint white underneath it. And the white really kind of comes up to the, uh, the edge of the, the decal. I think I'm going to go with a clear decal. So what I want to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to try and mark out the size of the decal.
for whatever reason, paint does not really stick to uh, model railroad freight cars very well. It, it's very hard to do this and not have brush strokes. And the brush strokes do kind of show through the decal. If it makes you nervous doing this, uh, acrylic paint comes off really easily with isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. It's very easy to remove any paint uh, from the kit. For this area, I put in two coats of white paint and this is how it looks. There's still some brush strokes, it should be okay. Here's my decal that I cut apart. And even though it's clear, you really want to get as close as you can to the edges. This looks like it should be okay. Uh, so this is going to be my first attempt. One thing worth noting, uh, Diecast Resurrection recommends that you put your decal on a sponge uh, with the printed side facing up rather than in the water. I put mine in the water and haven't had too much trouble. Um, but uh, if you print from an inkjet, uh, I think maybe that prevents uh, the ink from running or something. This was printed several hours ago. I haven't had any trouble uh, putting them in water right away. Um, so, but I usually try to wait a couple hours if I can. So this is my microsol, which I'm going to put on afterwards, and I'm going to try and do this upside down. This one I might have soaked in the water a little too long. The clear ones, for some reason, just only take a few seconds, really, maybe 10 seconds to soak. The uh, white ones seem to take a little longer. So we have a little bit of white sticking out. Uh, we have some white here and some white here, and hopefully I'm going to be able to fix that. But everything else, I think, looks pretty good. I'm going to let the Microsol kind of dissolve it and get it onto the ribs. So I'm going to let that dry, and we'll see what happens. So here you can see a little bit of the white underpainting uh, is visible around the bottom of the decal. So I'm going to try and remove it using some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Keep in mind here that any paint that is underneath the decal you will not be able to remove. So I'm only removing paint that is outside of the decal border. And uh, if you use the alcohol and too much effort, you can damage the decal. So you want to be a little bit careful of that. The paint in the corners can be a little bit difficult to remove, so I'm kind of scraping at that with a tweezer. So the little bit of white that's left in there, I think I can come, cover up with some weathering. So I don't think it's going to be a big deal. This is AK Interactive Track Wash, and it's kind of a rust wash. So I think that's pretty good, uh, at least for now. Uh, the last thing I want to do is spray it with either tester's dull coat or some kind of sealer to really seal it in there 
and get rid of whatever film look there is. Uh, I want to use a, a matte finish. So that should be pretty decent. I have this image open in paint.net and the first thing I want to do is crop the image down to the size of the graffiti. So I go to tools, rectangle select, select the graffiti area, image, crop to selection. I'm going to do that one more time, crop it a little bit more, rectangle select, image, crop to selection. So that's better. So I want to go to the magic wand and I want to start selecting. So what the magic wand does is it selects the area of the specified color that you click on and then similar colors using this toler tolerance. So as you go down in tolerance, it's closer and closer to the color you clicked on. And as you increase the tolerance, it starts to pick up other colors. This one's pretty easy because there's a lot of contrast between the color of the freight car and the color of the graffiti. And I hold down the control key and click again and I can pick up more areas. And that looks pretty good for now. So I'm going to go to edit and copy and go to edit, paste into new layer. Now you can't see the layers, but I have two layers. So this is the second layer and then the first layer is just the image. So now I'm working in the second layer and the selection is still there. I don't want to lose the selection. And I'm going to go to the white paintbrush, go to tools, go to paintbrush. You can't see the color picker, but it's white. And I want to pick a size that's convenient, probably a little more, a little bigger than that. And I'm going to paint out everything white and it only is going to paint within the selection. So only the selected areas get painted. Everything else doesn't get painted by the paintbrush. So I'm going to hide the first layer. So now you can see the second layer. That's what it looks like. And I'm done with the selection. So I can go to edit, deselect, and I go back and add the first layer in. So now still working in the second layer, and still using the white paintbrush, I'm going to come in and get everything that was missed by the selector magic wand. And I'm going to have to go to a smaller size. Probably get rid of this stuff too. Probably get rid of this one. and then get rid of all this black. I think I'm going to use the magic wand again. Uh, actually, I have to switch to the background image and use the magic wand and uh, select that area. Go to the paintbrush and get rid of the black part. and deselect and going back to layer one or layer two and then I'm just going to get rid of this line so that's what layer two looks like that's what layer one looks like so this is both of them together so you'll notice that there are some jagged edges around the graffiti. So I like to soften that up. So I'm working in layer two and I go to effects, blurs, Gaussian blur. And it's only going to blur the white. You can see it goes, that's the extreme version. I just want a little bit of blur, kind of soften things up a little bit. So that looks pretty good. So now I'm done with the layers, go to layer and merge layer down. Now I just have one layer, it's all one image. 
And a couple other changes I want to make. I want to brighten up the colors and brighten up the image because when you print it out, it prints out darker and it loses some of its vibrance. So brighten things up, increase the contrast, and then also go to hue saturation. And I can increase the saturation uh, somewhat, find something good. And I think that's it. That one's ready to use. Here's my other decal for the hopper. And uh, I didn't even bother printing it on plain paper to measure it. I just printed it out with uh, the decals from the boxcar. And I think I'm going to go with the middle size. Here is my trimmed decal. And since it's kind of long and probably kind of difficult to work with, there's sort of a natural break right here between the two different uh, tags and I think I'm going to cut it in half there and apply it as two separate decals. Here's the final model after spraying it with some matte uh, sealer. It looks like I could have done a better job at placing the decal, getting it all the way down to the bottom of the hopper, but it's good enough for this uh, video to show you how to do it. I think it'll look a little bit better with some weathering. Well, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, then I hope you found this helpful. And thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of these types of videos, let me know in the comments.